Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Evo G with the latest breakdown video where I go layer by layer in my Photoshop file to show you what I was thinking of and what I was doing to, to get from the before image to the after image. So if you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe if you if you like this type of content. And yeah, so let's just get right into it. So we're gonna be going from this image right here to that. So just to get started, let's um right at the top, let's put a a layer so I can make some markings and here we go so for this first layer you know we, we actually it, it worked out beautifully because if you could see from from the after image the the car is really well lit um, the, the perks of shooting a silver car is you know there's usually not a lot of reflections to have to deal with so I was really happy with the still frame of the car basically obviously the locations it is what it is but the, the as far as the car goes I, I was really excited with the shot and and I've actually stashed this shot it's been sitting on my computer for a couple of maybe a month or two now and uh, you know I, I knew I had something with it and I just didn't know where the direction I wanted to take it in and then I finally you know came up with something so obviously the first layer I'm gonna be working on you know cleaning up my ground cleaning up anything on the car that I really feel like should be which there's not much cleaning that up so you'll see when I click this on and off that stuff disappears you know we got we got this back there we got these stripes over here and over here so if we click that right back on and off for you you can also see right in the wheels I, I bumped a, a little bit of clarity and uh, fill light in the wheel so I'll zoom right in there just so you could see it it, it, it just seemed kind of soft for me um, I wanted a little bit more detail coming out in the wheel you see the caliper kind of lights up a little bit more in the disc so yeah so that's basically the first kind of just getting the file ready to you know move to the next section now this next layer I'm not gonna click on yet because it would be kind of confusing it's just a flat sky right so my sky and then that city is actually in two separate layers which I have this city here and you can see I just plop it right back in there right um, I actually have this city. Um, I bought it in a pack on a website. Um, I want to say it's photobash.org. Um, and, and it was like just a selection of, of silhouettes already isolated out, which, which is, you know, really awesome to work with. You not typically do you get, um, an already selected city for you to just kind of, kind of play with. So it was kind of rare to find that, um, so yeah, so you could see it kind of come together there. So now, just in this layer, you know, obviously when I put the city in, I kind of had like a straight line right there. Um, I actually found this this pretty cool brush, I mean, a little while back. So if you get this brush and you come over here, and instead of going into general brushes, you go into these dry medium brushes. These Kyle brushes are actually pretty cool. So if I could explain it really quickly, and you can see that it's kind of got now now that I get in close we kind of have this like feathering you know look to to the bushes right because if I if I left this normal it would be a straight line and that's gonna look really weird in the bushes so we have to like build back like the furriness and the tips of you know whatever these are these weeds and cattails or whatever whatever you want to call these bushes um, so the cool thing about this Kyle brush is it changes every time you click it changes so there's one click and see how the brush rotates so you get this really now I'm doing it very harsh it should be done on like a you know it should be done on a you know duller opacity maybe 60 50 and you really just kind of work in it like that and you can get these cool um, you can kind of work with bushes a little bit more to try to get a, a more natural cut when you're when you're dropping something in around a bush um, and, and there's a couple of them. There's a, you know, a, a drawing box, ultimate charcoal, you know, some of them do not do this effect. Um, I would just play with it. I honestly just clicked on it because I was looking for something different, a different shape than a, than a circle. Because if I go in with a circle, you know, you just fade out the circle completely, especially if you just, you fade out, it, you know, it can kind of work, but it will, it will look unnatural instead of this feathering, this, this feather look. Um, so 
you know, we wanted to maintain that, that furriness. The, the other thing too is the reason why that brush works so well is because the, you know, you can see that I'm, I, I don't know the exact, um, I could pull it up, but I probably shot this at like, you know, F 3.5 or something. I, I know it was a, as a, on the shallower side, you can see that the bush is already starting to get kind of blurred. Right. So, you know, the tips of these cattails sh aren't going to be tack sharp. So that's just something else to keep into consideration is when you're making that change, if you shot this at F 16, that you're going to need really a, a really harsh feather, um, on, on the on the furriness rather than how I went with a softer edge here and you can see that the city the city I brought in I, I did a Gaussian blur on it right so that city looks blurred to match with the depth of field I'm trying to match a depth of field since I'm bringing it in I can't have the city you know be um, you know beautifully sharp like it was shot at f16 when my photo was shot at 3.5 when you're working on a composite you got to try to match your depth of field so that's uh, what is going on here um, so now when, when the city got dropped in, you can see that in general, the city is, um, you know, I'll just kind of highlight it, the bridge, you, you know, these sides of the buildings right here, there it's, it's just all very blue, um, too blue. If, if you ask me, so like, if you just look at it in like two sections, we got this golder like a, like a golden not golder um we got a golden tone down here and then we got a kind of a blue tone up here and you can even see it back in our sky there's like this it's just a different tone you know this the sky would have been you know more so like blue kind of like over here um throughout the photo so you know it it kind of does work right off the bat but it's it still needed some color correction to make it match so i did just a simple photo filter right so you see the photo filter now, and I, I was basically going off of, you know, I was basically going off of these bushes, um, and and this tone right here, to try to try to mimic that. Another thing I did was, you know, I was I was already knowing that, you know, since the car is over here, or since the sun is over here, I'm inferring that the sun is somewhere over here, right? Because that's where it actually is in my car photo. If I can actually do this with a harder brush, I can show you. So obviously my direction of sun is something like that. And the buildings kind of match that, right? That's so saying, the buildings are saying, hey, the sun's over here somewhere, right? So in order to like kind of throw a little bit of emphasis on that and to match, you know, the, the highlight that I had here, I wanted to, wanted to try to enhance that on you know these sides like this side of the buildings you know you could see like the little catch light that it's getting on all those sides there so you know there's there's multiple ways to do that you could do it with a brush and, and linear dodge you could do it somehow with a screen layer you could do it with um you could literally just very sloppy select this you know throw a curve on it and just brighten it a little bit right and throw a little bit of red in there, throw a little bit of blue in there, right? Now, obviously, I'm this is dramatic, and I'm doing it just to show you guys, but just to just to kind of tell you guys what I mean here. So you could leave this on even just a normal layer, you know, throw it down to like 50% or something. Now, what I like to do is now I have I have the like let's say if I wanted it this orange, I have the look set up. So now I'll race it out. And then I'll actually just go in with a with a with white now on my black background layer there, uh, layer mask, and I'll go soft, right? You don't want to go 100% right off the bat, and I'll just kind of like paint in, you know, that that this like little kind of glow coming from from those sides there. Now, obviously, this is gonna be too much because I've already went in went ahead and did this um, in a way to keep it off your back like I, I wasn't too worried about like going over the sky here because you, you know like I said we already have like a perfectly silhouetted building like it's already you know selected so I knew I didn't care what I did to my sky back there because I knew I was going to drop a sky in right so um I was able to be a little bit more free-handed right you could see the sky gets dropped in right there but um I was able to be a little bit more free-handed and you could see what I mean how you know just like having just throwing some light shape to the buildings so that it kind of mimicked where I was saying that 
you know, a sun was going to be coming from, a flare was going to be coming from, just so it made sense, because you could see it's kind of dull. It's a little bit duller and not as harsh here. So that's just, uh, I compressed the layer down, so I can't show you guys that actual layer. So photo filter back on. The next step was dropping in a sky, and you can see it's right there. So I'll shut all these off, and that was our sky, right? Again, you, you know, always keeping in mind that my sun is somewhere over here right it's somewhere to the side right where my car was right so sun's like this in this photo it's like this in my photo and when i put the city on it's like that in the city photo as well um and and i think it works pretty good y you know it's um is it is it the exact Obviously, you guys saw the sky I was working with. Um, the sun was a bit bit hazier, but I think you know once I started painting in the sides of the buildings and and bumped in a flare, the the photo starts to really come to life and and you know look pretty real. You know this like like this wasn't even a, a, a location that has ever existed. Um, obviously, the city is and where my car is are real locations, but putting it all together, you, you know, you kind of get a little leeway into making it. Um, whatever you wanted to be um so the next step was i i liked the furriness from the kyle brush right but i it was almost it was almost too um blurred out you know right right along the from from out here i was getting a i guess the best way i could explain it was like a little bit of inconsistency um from from the separation of the the bushes to my background so i went in and got um, from Envato Elements, it's another website that I use, I got some 3D bushes and um, I actually put them in there to to make the, the tails stand out a little bit more because it was starting to look a little too blotchy. Like, you know, when uh, something I like to do is like, okay, well, how did my normal bushes look, right? And if I come over here and they didn't, they don't, they're not looking like that anymore. Well, I they need a little bit more work and you can see like, you know, some, some of the ends start to get a little taller than all the bushes, you know. Um, I'm going to go with a little bit smaller. You know, over here, you know, there's there's some standout branches that kind of get away and, and, you know, finish off the bush. And I felt like I started to lose that a little bit. So I went in with a 3D um, bush element. And I placed those right in there and I faded them right down into the bush. You can see if I click it on and off fading it right in to my bush then i threw a little gaussian blur on it and and now you have these these bushes that kind of finish off the you know essentially in this photo our horizon line that puts the two two photos together um so yeah the next thing i believe is another cleanup layer nope the next thing is a flare so um you guys seen me do flares this is a you know i create a new layer just regular new layer I throw it on a linear dodge I'll come over here to the gradient maps and I have a bunch of gradient maps made um, it, the, Photoshop has a lot of really good gradient maps already in in here you just have to add them as like your favorite presets or, or um, your your my gradients right if you go down you can get all these like already pre-made like you know some people tone with gradients I don't I don't tone with gradients but there, there's all these pre-made um, gradients that you can pop on actually that's not going to do anything because it's not my main photo but um so let me just go back forward so yeah so back on the gradient topic i grabbed just a orange fade put it on the circular i actually switched it to match my yellows up here and whenever you grab the photo you know, it, it always goes more towards the whiter side and, and we want it to be dramatic and then we could dial it back with opacity. So we brought it over to like a yellow like this. Um, I'm going to hit OK on it and uh, I'll click that one off and just do a new one on a linear dodge. And uh, just like a drag and pull, bang, and now we got a nice little flare. Um, a nice little haze, right? And now I could say I want it to be on my city. I want it to be, you know, really hazing out the city. Um, I personally didn't want to do this because it kind of contradicts the shadow side of the buildings. Um, so I so I went, you know, 
something like that. I, I want it to come into my bushes because, you know, I'm for for a composite. I'm I'm trying to plant this the idea that, you know, it's affecting the whole photo, right? So you could see the little haze that I put on right there. You know, the gradient map there, and I'll draw it out too. So you guys can see it. It really was just like something like that, right? So my flare grabs some of my photo, some of the new bushes and old bushes that I created, the bridge. It's definitely grabbing the sky and it's grabbing some of my city, right? So it kind of just, it's a, one of those little atmospheric elements that's going to wrap my whole photo to together in the long run right it's you know one of those I, I talk about it being a lot of little pieces that add up and eventually make it look very realistic that's one of the little pieces so the next thing I wanted to do is I shot this in the morning um, not the morning but it was like 10 a.m. and uh, it had just rained you could see the ground is pretty wet and I, I wanted that you know warm summer um, obviously I got you know two little mini snow banks so it's obviously not summer but it just made me think of summer but I want that I wanted that warm like you know haze where if you're looking at um a, an asphalt in the morning you kind of get that that smoky um you know the heat mixing with the cold and the rain it, you know I wanted to get that hazy ground so I added in the smoke um right there you could see it popping in and out and uh it's actually three or two smoke layers mixed into one now at this point and I just screened it um, but I had this nice haze going around you can see I'm just you know some of it looks like flares some of it looks like smoke and again I had it affect you know just around my bushes and um, the car right so now it's grabbing two elements of my three tier it's like a cake right three layers here on the cake so it's the smoke is grabbing two of the layers here in my eyes um, that being the car layer and the bush and uh, it's again wrapping the photo together um, in in some small ways to build the realism in the atmosphere um, I, I had one you know one was an overall smoke and then I had a more intricate smoke to make it seem like it was interacting with the car and like coming off the back end here like this um, and then another one down here by these caustics and and uh, playing with the wheels and fading into the car here so um, and and then I and then I just decided to not really put too much in the front end because I, I want I want that to be where your your eye kind of starts right like this is gonna be the focus this is what's gonna be the most in focus um, there's gonna be a nice little subtle blur going to the back of the photo so you got something you know let's call it a triangle sure it's a triangle of focus at least right because I have a focus here it falls out of focus to the background that's you know should be the least focused right um, and you kind of got at least a triangle there of, you know your where I want your eyes to go so the next thing I noticed was if I'm gonna add you know all this this morning haze you know a lot of times it it, it kind of washes the background out when you're shooting in the morning you know you get this haze in the in the further parts of your background and you know uh, another thing too is if you study blacks like you know what what would be black in the foreground something in the way distance is gonna have a, a different um, you know black t like amount a black point it might be hazier it might be faded a little bit more so I went ahead and put a another gradient map right there right and this one instead of doing a radial it's again it's on a linear dodge actually this one I did just normal right so it's on just a normal layer no linear dodge for this one I went in here I grabbed that same golden tone but instead of it being on the radial um, I went with the reflected I believe that's called reflected right yeah reflected and I just held shift and I held, held straight up and it's gonna create me a nice little not on a linear dodge on normal it's gonna create me a nice you know straight line of you know gold there or whatever color you want it to be it, it obviously you can see in my thumbnail that I must have went with a, a duller yellow but just for the sake of the video you then would grab this 
throw it down to, you know, 50, 25, 12, whatever you want, right? Um, I obviously chose 17 on the original layer. And, uh, you know, then I'll, then I created it into a layer mask. So I hit it and then I went in with a brush and painted where I wanted it to affect on my layer, on my layer mask there on white, went here and I painted it just, just to like hit the tips of, of my bushes again. And like underneath the bridge, I wanted, I wanted that, the, the darkness, you can see the darkness under the bridge is too, it's a little, it's almost darker than underneath my car. And I didn't want the weight of it. I didn't want your eye to be sucked in to the darkness under that bridge. Right. So I faded it a little bit more. So now that, you know, you're staring over here, hopefully that's my intention is you're staring at the car, you know, and that background is just, it's there, but it's slowly the atmosphere is kind of, you know, shifting your eye to look in one spot first. And, and then you might look at the bridge and in, in the buildings. Right. So that, that was the intention there. Um, this next one is pretty much the only work I did on the car, which like I said, working on a silver car, it, it they are dreams to work with because uh, they're even easier than white in my opinion. White white can be a little fussy trying to, to nail the exposure on. So the only thing I had to really do was take out this little uh, this little inspection sticker and that is right here and I'll click it on and off. It's really all I did. Um, so that was nice. You know a lot of times with the composites we have to um, we have to worry about like seeing through the windows but obviously since i shot kind of like standing up um and i shot down on the car the background isn't in my windows so i don't have to worry about it here so that's an another nice little um you know trick to having to get around with dealing with the windows in a, in a composite because those can be a little tricky sometimes the windows can can definitely be a headache um so next that was that the next is with my light leaks right so I, you can see I put them on and they are not the right color. So I have, you know, kind of like a little spotty light leak here. And it was kind of like an overall haze like that, right? And you can see the next layer is a hue saturation layer. Make sure colorize is checked and you pick the color you want. And that will make it a more consistent color light leak. Some, you know, to have, you know, blue blue hues, purple hues, and green hues in it. it might work for some photos, but for this photo, I'm really inferring that it's a, a nice golden haze coming, right? So I needed to, to make a hue saturation layer only affecting, you can see that little carrot arrow, only affecting my light leak layer. Um, change it to colorize, picked that again, that yellow that I was going for. Right. And you can see I click on that and, and it changes all my my light leak there to match that color. Right. The color that I had picked. And it's not it's, it's not like I'm going with a specific number. Like you could see me sliding this around. Right. I just, you know, got right into that tone, that general tone. And I just slid it back and forth and said, oh, nope, that's too orange. That's too yellow. And, and came up with a number. Um, so that's how we did that. And then we did an overall color balance and this is real subtle. I don't, I never know how much you guys are going to be able to see on YouTube with some of these subtle changes, but this is mainly, I did it for the whole photo, but you can mainly see it in the asphalt, right? So this is, I, I really like doing my color balances this way and I'll, I'll go into it in depth in a, in a second here. But if you look in the asphalt here, I can't, if you look like right here, you'll see that I'm, it's kind of taking like a lot of the green and blue, especially like right here. There's a, there's a bit of green and blue in there. I'm going to get the red all out of there. If you look right there, there's a little bit of green and blue there. And you can see I add like a reddish gold to that part too, right? I wanted to, to make sure that I had the consistency throughout the photo in the darks, right? And, you know, I'm telling you to look there, but it does do it up in the, up in the buildings too. You can, kind of notice it on these sides here kind of makes it a little bit more warm up there and that's just to, to again those little pieces that kind of wrap the whole photo together um lastly i you know wanted to since i was adding all this haze and i wanted that that morning 
you know, smoke coming off the asphalt because the sun was hitting a wet ground. I wanted that. I wanted the flares to have a little bit more of a blur effect, right? So you can see, I just threw a Gaussian blur layer on, on the image and then I just painted in, I, I, I merged it down into one file as my final layer, but I'm gonna click on and off and you can see like kind of a blur happening back here. See that? And again, I let it affect, I'll do it back here too, I'll click it on and off. You can see it hitting the bridge, right? kind of just throwing this this like haze blur you see it hitting the spoiler you see it hitting the snowbank and the in my asphalt there um so and and you'll notice that i did not put it on in the front of the car right the front of the car there's basically no changes it i had it stop at like the rear window here because i really wanted it to only affect like the brighter parts of my image so i had this kind of this glow coming right so you can see it even hits the back of the wheel there a little bit, um, and and again that's just to that's just to kind of create that atmosphere, that morning atmosphere that I was that I was looking for um, to have this like steam coming from com coming from the ground there from the sun. So um, let me backtrack really quick just before we end here too, and I'll show you guys the color grade. So the reason why I like color balance, I've been, I use, I'll switch it up. I'll use curves. I'll use selective color. I'll use color balance. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll play around with a lot of things, but color balance is fun because, you know, I'll, I'll do a new layer right here and you can go in and select shadows, midtones, or highlights, right? So let's say shadows. Let's say for obviously the sake of this video, I wanted to add a lot of purples to the darker parts of the image. So let's just go with magenta like that, right? So now we stop there, right? Let's not even worry about our highlights. So I'll go to image, apply image, and then you can leave it in emerge. All these settings are fine, but I'm going to click invert and you'll see that, you know, right, right now nothing's being affected really, or the whole image is kind of getting purple tossed on it. I know we pick shadows, but it'll, it'll kind of hit your photo globally. So you got to be careful. So that's why this apply image part is fun. Um, so if you look at your thumbnail right now without clicking invert you'll see everything that's you know white or lighter colored in your thumbnail is what's being what's going to be affected right now right so if i click invert now the darker parts of the image is what's going to be affected right so if i just if i hit cancel it's just a layer mask right it and you see how it's globally hitting the whole photo, right? I mean, I'm sure there's purple even getting poured into some of the highest highlights because you just got this overall layer mask. But the moment you go to apply image and you have it inverted to just your shadows, now there's a bigger separation between your highlights and your shadows. Now to take it one step further, because I think the purple is still leaking too much into my photo, you're going to on that on this adjustment, you're going to hit control L and it's going to bring up just a levels on that. Right. And you'll see when we move some of these levels, you see, the, if you look down here while I'm moving these, look at the thumbnail and you'll see black pouring into more parts of the photo. And what this is doing is it's selecting just the darker parts of your image and applying that purple to only the dark parts. So if I went all the way down, it will essentially take it completely out of the photo, right? But if I went like this, it's only putting it into the buildings and the, you know, under parts of the car, maybe the wheels. And you can see, you know, the preview, that was the normal layer. That was before we applied image really. And this is after, right? So now I'm getting a more selective you know, attack on the shadows, right? So let's just say we wanted, just for the sake of this video, we wanted it to be, and you could go the other way with it too, right? You could bring it back the other way if you wanted to bleed in more. But um, let's just say we're going to do something like that. And now I'll do the exact same process for my highlights. So let's just say we wanted it, you know, really having like a greenish red. Now you see how that's affected everything? Well, the moment we go into apply image and we invert it back to just being our highlights, hit OK. We're going to hit control L and now we're going to, we're going to say, Hey, we don't want you to be around 
you know, our darker parts of the car, our wheels, our dark parts of the wheels, the dark parts of the building. So now we're going to try to fight it back so it's really only hitting the highlight of our car in the sky. And there you go. You know, so now you have, you see, you see me clicking it on and off. On the car, as far as the car is concerned, it's really only, I'm going to circle it, it's really only hitting right, oh my gosh, I got to get red. Can't see it. Okay. It's really only hitting, you know, our highlights. Watch when I click it on and off. See that? And then it's obviously, it's going to hit all your bright spots, right? Your brighter spots is going to hit back here. It might hit some of these. It's going to hit up here. It's going to hit here. It's going to hit all this. It's going to hit this. I'll click it on and off. See that? See it clicking in there? Obviously, that I'm overdoing it a little bit for the Photoshop just to show you guys. But um, that's the way I like color grading. Uh, it's, in, it's in two different, you know, layers. Instead of just, you know, the, the problem with... The problem lately with I what I see in curves is so this is just the original one. I just dial it back to the original one. But the problem with curves, we'll shut that off, is you can kind of do the same thing. You can you can get to the same spot because you could just do the apply image to curves too. But you know, you're you're working, you know, globally here on on the entire image, and you know. It, there's just a, a, a ton of ways to skin the cat, basically, because you could get to the same the same look here if you really wanted to. Um, I don't know. I just I've just been enjoying the um, the the control that I'm getting out of apply image, you know, because you could come back in here and apply image, but you know, cur curves is would be the second my my second way to go and color grade an image. Honestly, what I like doing with curves more, and I've been doing this in Lightroom at the end more than in Photoshop is I like to play around with my black and whites in curves instead of going and doing the color grading. I'll do the color grading and color balance, but in curves, like I like the black, the black tone, the, the haze to my black here. So I didn't really mess with it much, but you know, sometimes like to get that like more faded look, you know, sometimes it's a little bit more cinematic looking. You, you just play with the curves and, you know, contrast, um, I, I've been liking that for curves, you know, if you wanted to add more haze to the blacks, if you wanted to, you know, get a, a little bit more of a film vibe or a vintage vibe, but you know, I, I obviously didn't have to do that for this one. So yeah. So the final image is right here and this is, you know, what we walked away with. Now I, I did do a couple more things to it, which it's not, you know, not even worth getting into just cause it's, there's such minor tweaks. But from here, I'll save it as a PSD file, and, and that will make that PSD file go back into my catalog on Lightroom. And um, I'll do my last little bit of sharpening. I don't do sharpening in Photoshop. I'll do it in Lightroom on the PSD file. I'll do sharpening. I'll do, like, any little, um, you know, lens, lens distortion corrections and uh, any little f final color tweaking, especially if I'm working with you know, six, seven images from a set, I'll hold them all up together in Lightroom and I'll do like, you know, maybe one photo I added a little bit too much purple in the blacks. So then in, in Lightroom, I'll kind of get that all squared away and evened out. So I have a nice matching set that looks all together. But yeah, so this is pretty much the final image. And uh, yeah, so uh, let me let me know what you guys think. Um, leave a like and uh, subscribe if if this helped you or if you want to see more content like this i'm hoping to have the, the office remodeled shortly here i know i've been saying that but that we got to get this office remodeled so i can start doing some live streaming and um some some one-on-one -on -one help um with some of you guys that might might want to get into something like that so it's it's on my to-do list i've just been uh real busy over here so yeah i appreciate you guys checking the video out and uh i'll see you guys next time thanks